Hello, my name is Ben Shafi. I'm a graduate student here at The Ohio State University. My thesis is the All Sky Automated Survey for Supernovae, or Assassin. I'm here today to talk to you about our first exciting result, the discovery of a large aging outburst from the nearby Faison Spiral Galaxy, NGC 2617. To follow up and analysis of this outburst were a large collaborative effort, the results of which are presented in our paper entitled, The Man Behind the Curtain. The Assassin Survey scans the extragalactic sky visible from Hawaii roughly once every five nights in V-band. On April 2013, a transient source alert was triggered by the brightening of the central region of NGC 2617. Follow-up observations from the MDM 2.4 meter telescope confirmed that the nucleus was the source of the outburst. A follow-up spectrum from the Apache Point Observatory 3.5 meter then show that the source now has the strong, broad emission lines and continuum shape characteristic of a Seaford 1, showing that the outburst was due to AGN variability. However, when we compare this spectrum with archival spectra taken in 1994 and 2003, it becomes clear that NGC 2617 went through a dramatic change of Seaford type. It is well known that both the broad line and continuum components of AGN are time variable at all wavelengths. This enables, for example, the reverberation mapping technique for studying black hole masses. However, there are only a few cases where the changes are so large that the broad line components of H alpha and H beta appear in a Seifert 2 or vanish from a Seifert 1. Such changing look AGN are rare and provide us with an important insight into AGN physics. Given the strong outburst and dramatic change in the spectral properties of NGC 2617, we requested and obtained swift target of opportunity observations to monitor in the optical, UV, and x-rays. These observations found that the AGN continued to brighten further into a large flare, with its x-ray flux increasing by over an order of magnitude, and its optical and UV continuum flux increasing by almost an order of magnitude. We point out that, although the spectral changes observed in NGC 2617 could have occurred at any time in the last decade, it seems most likely that the change in C for type was associated in some way with this strong outburst. This is based upon the rarity of both changing look AGN and powerful X-ray flares. We announced this brightening in an astronomical telegram and a massive space-based and ground-based observation effort began. This effort covered a large swath of the electromagnetic spectrum, from the radio, to the near IR, to the optical, to the UV, to the X-rays, and even to the hard X-rays. In total, we present 70 days worth of photometric and spectroscopic follow-up in our paper. The most exciting result from this data can be seen in our figure 7. Here we can see a clear lag between the X-ray and UV to near IR variability. It is also reasonably clear that the longer wavelength light curves are smoother than the shorter wavelength light curves. To quantitatively estimate the time lags, we use the reverberation mapping and light curve analysis package Javelin. In a modified version of our figure 8, we show the lags as determined by Javelin between the X-ray variability and the variability at other wavelengths. The lag from the X-rays to the UV is about 2-3 to three days, whereas the lag between the X-rays and the near IR is approximately 6-9 to nine days. These lags are a powerful tool to distinguish between the two physical processes most likely responsible for the strong X-ray to near IR variability observed in NGC 2617. These processes are either that 1. Locally generated viscous perturbations propagate inward through the accretion disk, or 2. An increase in the X-ray flux coming from the smaller, central hot corona heats the inside of the disk first and then moves outwards. Thus, changes in accretion rate might be expected to produce outside-in variations moving from the red to the blue to the x-rays, while changes in coronal emission might be expected to produce the inside-out variations that we observe in NGC 2617. We go on to create a simple physical toy model using x-ray illumination to heat a thin disk. This model takes the x-ray light curve as an input and qualitatively and quantitatively reproduces the UV through near IR light curves. In fact, that such a simple toy model works at all strongly suggests that a more detailed and realistic modeling study is warranted. If you'd like to know more about our work, please see our paper which is posted on the archive. Thank you.